what, um, really what brought you to Children of a Lesser God, because that's what you um, worked on this year. And also, I think it's really important for this room to know what steps you take in making that decision and when you're conceiving a revival. Uh, wow, Children of a Lesser God, quickly. Uh, when I was approached by the producers to direct that particular play, I thought I was humbled by it because my recent work was all stories with African Americans in the story for Broadway. And I said, wow, I'm defined by more than race. This is great. Children of the Lesser God is a lovely love story about two white people that really can't really communicate. So I accepted it thinking it was a love story and I get to express love. And then I started taking sign language from uh, a woman, Lauren Ridloff. And I took sign language from her for once a week for a year, preparing for this Broadway production. Wow. And when I first met her, I'm in a, 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 coffee, um, a coffee bar. And I'm thinking, in my own prejudice, I'm thinking when I walk in there, this woman is going to be 70 years old, 7-0, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and she's going to be introverted, and she's going to have glasses, and she's going to be shy. And mm -hmm. that's just my own. I'm thinking, that's what a deaf ASL teacher looked like. And I walk in, mm -hmm. and it's this multiracial 36-year-old, mm -hmm. looks like a model, mm -hmm. and, she caught, and she's Googled me. And I go in, and she's like, <laughs> and she calls me over. We start talking, and she says, and I'm like, I don't know, uh, eat? Oh, yes, okay. And then she's like, drink? And I, oh, yes, and she makes a W with her finger, and she's like, water, drink water. Oh, yes, yes, and it's coffee. And so that's our first lesson. Every mm. week, we would have a lesson in a public place. So we went to the museum and we studied color. So it was like, oh, brown and black and white and pink and red, you know. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I watched how people looked at us when we were together. And when they would see her sign, they would look differently at us. Or we went to a museum and we're talking to someone. The minute they found out that she did not speak, did not use her voice, or she and that she was deaf, they would look away from her and look at me. Mm. And then she would say, no. Mm -hmm. look at me and she would make them communicate with her and that then the idea of doing the play started changing for me it was no longer a love story with two white folks and the challenge was communication it was like now it's a story about how we all try to pretend we're God and we make each other over to fit our idea of whatever the person we're talking to so if it's black and white Republicans Democrats whatever the difference is, that's how we talk to each other. And I said, that is so timely, that's what the country needs. And mm -hmm. I, fast forward, I ended up casting Lauren in the play, in the role, and she had ever done a play before, except in high school. And she has two deaf children, and her husband is deaf. So I got into their family and started understanding more of what the play was about. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm, a, I'm given a, a revival, I treat it as a new play. I say, what does this play mean to the community now. Why should we listen to this play now? Children of Alessica, my approach to that was, it's time for us to listen to each other. So I built a production around that, around the diversity. Once I cast a black woman as the lead, then I had to cast an Asian woman as the lawyer, because I was interested to see how an Asian person representing a black deaf woman, how that would play with the audience. Yeah, right. Um, so I diversified the entire cast, and mm. did I answer your question? You definitely uh, did. But uh, one quick question for you. Yeah. You originally went into it thinking it was a love story. Yes. So in your original... Is it's still a love story. It's a different love story. If in a love... So I had, to, I had Joshua Jackson, and then I put, I put them together because they look sexy together. I said, that's a love story America can believe. Mm. But if both people are the same race and they go to the parents and it's like, oh, it's just a deaf teacher and his same race girlfriend talking to me. But if you go to a black mother and it's an inter <laughs> interracial relationship, now it's working on two or three different levels. So it's the same love story, but it works on race, class, mm -hmm. all those different levels in every possible way. And, it, and sometimes, 
I mean, sometimes I feel, and I'm not being defensive, but sometimes I feel as a country and as a people that write about what we do, sometimes we don't explore what it takes to, to put the plays together and what the artists are trying to say in the play. Sometimes we go back, well, I remember 50 years ago when they did this play, and so they walk in and say, oh, it doesn't look like that play did. Mm -hmm. And so especially for people of artists of color, you know, 50 years ago was very different for us. So we're, as storytellers, we're trying to talk through the lens of now. Why this play now? I don't know if you asked me that or not, but. Um, That's exactly um, what I asked you. Yeah.